<laughs> it's the summer of 2011. The London riots are in full swing. The final Harry Potter movie has just come out, and Cher Lloyd is number one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I am sitting in the back of a Chevrolet 4x4 pickup truck, squashed in between five very sweaty Scottish car mechanics in the middle of the sweltering Utah desert. We are trying to break the land speed record. We're here on the salt flats, and the reason we're in this car is the fact that we are trying to will the tiny, tiny green speck on the horizon to go faster because we're trying to break a land speed record. Now, my role on this team is chief materials engineer. This means that whenever any of the engines break, which is all the time, <laughs> it's my job to find out why. Now, um, on the first day, our driver, Rick, is going at like 250 miles an hour, and he hears a bang from the engine. He steers it to the side, and we take the car back to the pits to open it up and see what had happened. Now, as a materials engineer, I'm sort of like, um, sort of like a, forensic, a forensic pathologist, but for dead cars instead of dead people. And I've seen my fair share of fractured materials but this particular engine post-mortem was particularly graphic. The gearbox was completely shredded, all right? It was just reduced to <coughs> glitter floating in engine oil. But out of this, I pick up two gear cogs, which had come out whole. Now, I turn these over in my hand, and the first thing that I notice is that one of them has a sort of dull, mottled, um, fracture surface, which is where it had originally attached to the main cog wheel. Now, I know immediately that this has undergone ductile fracture. Ductile fracture is like what happens when you break a Snickers bar. The material bends and flows before it breaks. But this was the weird thing. The second gear cog had a shiny, flat fracture surface. WTF, <laughs> I said to myself. How can these two cogs made of exactly the same material have broken off in such different ways? Well, the answer lies with the speed at which they broke off. Because if you take a Snickers bar, chocolate has got a lot smaller, hasn't it, recently? <laughs> if you take a Snickers bar and you break it fast enough, the molecules in it don't have time to, to bend around each other and to flow over each other. And so the material just snaps. Thank you very much. <laughs>